Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Friday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel here with Joel Kanyan and Dennis Dick. Stop us if you've heard this before, but the reopening trade is back on. The cruise stocks, airline stocks, everything up this morning. AMC says they're reopening most of their theaters by the end of July. Uh, bullish, bullish, everything bullish. We'll talk about that and... Uh, Maybe the, the the change in sentiment from yesterday, it's also a quad of which, so keep that on your radar. The expiration of um, every sort of options and futures contract under the sun. Uh, so we'll talk about how that could add volatility. And our guest today is Jason Raznick. He's the founder and CEO of Benzinga. He would join the show at 840. Let's bring Joel on here. Why don't you bring yourself off mute and tell us what happened, Joel, in the overnight trading session. Oh, we're in the green, Spencer. Good morning, traders and investors uh, all over the world. We got some green on the screen here. It's a little scary. I, I talked to one of my buddies yesterday, and uh, we came to the same conclusion. This market won't go down. And when markets won't go down, they go up. Uh, talk with Dennis. We'll bring him on here also. They've tried to bust this market the last few days on some COVID news, and no can do, but uh, S&Ps are higher by 36 handles, uh, dipped a little bit below the close, pre-market high 34.75. I'm looking for, I'm looking for either uh, Tuesday's high here at 56 and a quarter or that one high. We got a little bit uh, wild. I believe 56 and a quarter is a high for the week. So we'll keep an eye on that as an intermediate target. Uh you have crude over forty dollars, up a buck seventeen. Wow, at forty oh one, gold in the green by seven twenty at seventeen thirty two, silver in the green at by twenty four point seven cents at seventeen seven point five five. Uh, Triple D, not much of a dip last night, and here we are back up higher. We're. I'm kicking here. Um, I'm going to be back in one minute. I got my kids running around here. This is one of those mornings oh, where yeah. it's uh, an That's issue. okay. Go, go for two one? minutes. I'm going to be right back at you guys. Wait, which kid is the problem child? <laughs> All right, just go. Well, just go. well both kids. Both They're kids. always the problem children. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I, I don't know where my wife is. I got to go hunt her go, down go, because go, I go, got go. the boy that's got demands. We will be right. right back. I'll be right back. At you. All right, Dennis. Go, 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 go. <laughs> that doesn't happen too often. No, it doesn't. No, no it doesn't. but uh, just to, we'll, just, we'll start out with a quick question here. Yeah. Uh, quadruple witching. Right. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. Joe, explain what the quad because yes. we had this question yeah. the past couple of days, and yeah. you, you've been talking about it for like since Monday. But right. uh, explain the quad which really, I don't know if 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 the quad which is as much a factor as a triple which, but explain, Ooh, yeah, nice. Ex explain That's explain what the quad which and the triple which is, and explain why today is important. Okay, so it occurs on the third Friday of every month and every quarter. So that the third Friday, which is today. March, June, September, and December. And it refers to the simultaneous expirations of single stock options, which a lot of us trade, single stock futures, which that, that's what they added it to make it the quad, stock index options, and stock futures. So the triple which was the word for a long time. They added the single stock futures I, not a lot of people. I think I've had maybe one person on this show. I think uh, Jerry Parker, Chesapeake Capital uh, trades those. So what you see is the the roller of the contracts that it's already transpired in the S and P futures that takes place on the uh, the Wednesday preceding the expiration, the second Tuesday. So it's just extra volatility. Uh, everyone in stock positions or stock uh, index options or stock futures, since the contracts are expiring, either they can let them expire in the money or out of the money or worthless 
or they can roll the contract to give themselves more time. So that's why you saw some of the choppy action uh, at the end of last week and a little bit of this week. But uh, I hope I hope that's the explanation for quadruple. And you'll be some big imbalances on the open here. There and, already is, uh, Joel. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the big imbalances have come out early, and obviously we know they can flip flop a little bit on expiration. But this just feels like the kind of day that they're not going to flip to sell. They are buy and they are fierce. There is huge buy imbalances here on the open right now. I'm looking at Exxon Mobil, and, and again, we do know they can flip flop, so these can change. Just like my opinions in the market, Procter and Gamble six hundred and seventy three thousand to buy, Coca Cola nine hundred and two thousand to buy. This is about ten times what they normally are. Kroger, which had earnings, 204000 to buy. Exxon Mobil, 462000 to buy. Chevron, 379000 to buy. American Express, 287000 to buy. You want to see a buy imbalance that's on Boeing, 277000 to buy. They, they do the projected openings. I don't like to even say them because we know the liquidity is going to come in. But, you know, these projected openings are so high on all of these stocks right now. Obviously, we're a long ways from the open. And those numbers are meaningless until you get to about 92930. But just with the size of the imbalances that I'm looking at here this morning, makes me think that this market's going to continue to go higher here, at least from a day trading perspective. Yeah, I mean, obviously they can flip, and this they is can. not. Yeah, this is not uncommon, though. I mean, uh, these expirations have been, you know, for the most part. I mean, we've had a, uh, you know, an up market. So, yeah, it's hard to find the reason i don't know like i just left for two minutes there and i don't know if you got into it joel but i mean you know you were talking about your buddy and you're talking you know it's not going down i mean yesterday they had reasons if they wanted to take it down they could have leaked it a little bit and just holds up all day and then what happens you know the leaders are the leaders and they're leading us up what happens overnight though and last night the laggards start to come back. So not only are the leaders leading, the laggards are starting to come back in. So I know we see the s and is only up 1%. You're like, wow, it's a pretty good day for the markets. I feel like it's one of those days that we could actually build on this. Um, so if you're short the market, I would not want to be short this market. This is just my opinion. And it can flip-flop. I mean, that's why I got to listen to the show every day. As traders, we have a job to be able to change our opinion quickly because when you're wrong, you have to admit you're wrong and you have to move on. I mean, just like my Netflix call last year, I kept saying, you know, that Netflix when it was $320, I thought it was going to go a lot lower. It did for a while, but I, I, when it came back up and started going up and wouldn't go down on bad news and the Disney Plus, you know, really didn't seem to be impacting it at all, you've got to admit you're wrong. And then the COVID thing happened and obviously Netflix has blasted off since. But your job as a trader is to be able to change your opinion when you need to change your opinion. How do you know when you're wrong? You start losing money. When you're wrong, the market will tell you you're wrong. So don't fight the market. I mean, logic has not worked. We know we look at this economy and we think, how? How could the markets even think about continuing to go higher? How could the markets even think about going to all-time highs? This market is completely disconnected from the economy. It has been for a long time. It's run by FOMO. It's run you know, by retail. I mean, retail is moving stocks like never before. Um, usually think, oh, 12, 15% of your volumes retail. It's really institutional money that moves stocks. I'll tell you, lately, retail is driving the bus. And, and, that, I... and, and that means, you know, when you have traders who have been trading, you know, not very long at all, driving the bus as a group, you see stocks just do crazy things like that UONE. I mean, I have egg on my face yesterday. I had no idea that it could come back like that. Usually when you see these stocks go from 2 to 40 and back down to 10, usually they never give you another shot. It not only gave you another shot, it gave you another shot the next day. And now it's making new highs again. So it's showing you the power of the retail trader because this isn't institutional money piling in a stock like Urban One UONE. This is retail money the retail buzz, the retail train, whatever you want to call it. But if you're on the wrong side of the retail train, you are getting run over valuations, meaningless to the retail traders right now. Meaningless. Yeah, and uh, just a comment, you know, just on uh, overall, you know, just 
I think even the last two or three days, you've had this uh, interday drops, 15, 20 handles. And I look, I go to my tweet deck. Yeah, there's something COVID in Florida. Yeah, there's something COVID in Texas. And then like clockwork, you know, met, not even within five minutes, boom, the market's back up. And uh, that level that I talked about yesterday that I was hoping we were going to get down to, uh, it reminds me a couple weeks back, like after we did the consolidation right around the 50% retracement, and they kept on trying to hit this thing. I think it was maybe 2750, and they went down there five, six, seven times. And I'm like, it's not going through there. That's just, you know, it, until it goes through that level, you have to be bullish. So, you know, I kept that hat on uh, yesterday. It didn't get down in that area, but, you know, at the close, We've been ramping up middle night. I mean, I think it was an easy call to, to, to go home long a little bit. And uh, we'll see how much foul through we can get off the open is always the important thing. So, again, it's just, you know, this retail rush comes into stocks. If there's a story, they can get behind it. I mean, there, you're seeing big movers here again this morning. One that I've actually got in my portfolio, which was given to us by one of our chat listeners in the YouTube chat, was Workhorse, WKHS. It's getting a huge lift here overnight. It's getting an analyst coming in. And I think it has some contract. It's selling some trucks. And I watched it last night just going, going, going. This thing almost hit six bucks last night. And we bought this, you know, last week when I was mentioning on the show or a week and a half ago at 3.30. Um, it's electric trucks. So I just like the possibility that the story could get hot. All it needs, all this market wants is a story. It loves the electric story right now. So here's kind of a forgotten stock. And all of a sudden, it's starting to, you know, get a little bit of love. And, um, you know, we had some analyst action. And now it's getting some major volume here, too. So, again, the little retail rush comes in. And you see the stock up 20%. I still have it, full disclosure. I'm on it. So the stock, uh, so there is that a headline. There is the uh, headline about uh, uh, they're selling some trucks to somebody, but they also twelve hundred trucks to Lordstown Motors or something. Right, right. And I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up on the pro here. Also, yeah. uh, BTIG did raise their price target from six to ten dollars on this yesterday. So uh, analysts jumping in, jumping on the bull train here. But uh, the headline of uh, Lordstown uh, buying twelve hundred other trucks is yeah. So two headlines. Obviously, the headline right after the close was BTI, BITG, BTIG. I don't know why it says BITG in the pro. It's BTIG oh, yeah. um, give, giving, you know, the rating boost and the price target boost. And that started to lift the stock. And then this contract came out and then it was just to the moon, Alice. Um, 590, it probably got overdone. I mean, you do have some open interest in the options at five. So sometimes they like to pin those until they expire today. I don't know if that's going to be a magnet to it, but these things can go anywhere. I mean, the open interest is, in, you know, when you're trading this kind of volume, 376,000 already in the pre-market can go anywhere. So um, I'm sticking with it just because I feel like this is one of those stories that could stay hot for a while. So I don't see, you know, the reason to, you know, a lot of times when I get a 20% gain overnight at bucket, but I feel like this stock could get, you know, this is one that could stay hot for a bit. So I'm going to stick with it. All right. I'm trying to stick with it. I already to... sell too early. I'll probably sell too late on this one, but. Uh, 591, uh, 545 is up 91 cents here. Been making a nice move. I'll just identify your pre-market high for you. And that's always a level that you just want to see it take it out and go. And uh, it's got up to, what is this, 580 a few times. And it struggled. It popped up there after the close a few times this morning. So, not that far away from it, but you just seem just I'd keep an eye 580 for more follow through. And then if I look at the month monthlies here, let's see if I can see anything on the monthlies. Uh, really not much in the monthlies here. Whew, man, it hasn't been over 580 in a long time. So 580, six bucks, just see it keep on going. If you have like the higher open and you go higher than you thought, and then you come back down to the open. You guys all know how we feel about that. Um, if you really want another target, you really think this thing's going, pair of monthly highs back in December of 2016 and January 17. Two pair, uh, pair of highs, about the 740 area, but that'd be a huge move. That's a, that's a long ways away. Yep. But these stories can get hot. The stock is up about – I bought this two weeks ago, and I think I'm up 70% in it or something, so – it's it's crazy, you know. You get on these right right side of some of these moves, and they are incredible moves here. 
Um, jumping back over just to other stories and story stocks that are moving here this morning. Um, we got a uh, price target boost at N for NVAX, Novavax. Um, it was a big boost. The stock, again, looking like it's gearing up and ready to take off. Here's the stock back in May that was $17. It's now 62 So another one of these that retail's just grabbed and run with. I mean, you're breaking out to new highs here now on NVAX, new highs, at least on the move, highs we haven't seen since 2016. Um, it's tough to be bearish a stock when it's just breaking out. Was there news on them or was it a, just... a rating change? It, it, it's, it's literally just a massive price target raise. Kenner Fitzgerald was the one I'll bring it up in the pro here. They're, uh, they're maintaining their overweight, but they're raising their price target from $45 to $88. Wow. wow. Pretty big volume here being thrown around with this one. Uh, this one doesn't look like it's done going up. Trading at the highs of the pre-market session, which is uh, 6302 right there. It's 6285. Man, you have a big, ugly candle. Hmm. I don't know what happened back in uh, November of 2016 to this stock, but uh, it went from 169.80 to 23.20. So I don't know. I, I don't know what happened back then, but I'm just telling you, there's not a lot of resistance in here. Uh, just keep on going, kind of like what your Spotify did yesterday. Oh, Took out I, that... I messed up the Spotify all to hell. I was in it twice, and uh, I, it was the Momo turn. And I was like, it's been hanging out here this 180 too long. It looked like it was starting to, you know, hang where I thought it might, you know, start to fall off the cliff. So I booked a small profit in it, and then two days later, obviously Kardashian deal, and it's gone. And um, I wanted to hold on to it. I had on for a swing trade. It wasn't a long-term investment. I just talked myself out of it. I, my, my stop out, I would have never got stopped out. I said I was going to stop out if it went below 175. I somehow thought I was going to you know, jump my stop. And I was like, you know, thinking, I, I started thinking too much. They was hitting the Momo there four days ago. That like the stuff, the growth tech, they were hitting for those couple of days. And I was like, I got spooked and thought that they were going to start to hit it too. Sold it, took the small profit, and I've left a lot of money on the table. So major screw up by me on Spotify. All right, SPs just hit 313750. Uh not much up here. We had an interday high from Tuesday at 4275. Uh, just hanging out here, not near the highs of the session. They're all buy imbalances. I think we just continue to go higher here unless these things flip, which they can. They can flip. We'll let you know if they flip. But as of right now, it's just looking like to the moon. Um, I, I don't even know where to go. We can go to the earnings plays. I mean, you, you want to know about, you know, stocks that move and how influential CNBC is right now. KMX gets a mention again. Oh, we saw some call buyers. It was trading last night and it has earnings. So we'll talk the earnings in a second. But last night on Fast Money, just a brief mention by our friend Michael Cow there at CNBC. And he says there's some option buyers here ahead of the earnings. It went from $97 because it was trading down actually ahead of the report went before he mentioned that. It went from 97 and change. I watched this thing last night go up to almost 102. All on somebody saw somebody buy some options. That is just showing you how much retail is just moving stocks. Anyways, it comes down. The earnings report actually was not great last night or great this morning. Give us the numbers, Spencer. But the stock, hold it up. Yeah, uh, so a bit of a weird report here because the EPS includes a, a charge. So EPS, $0.03 cents per share versus a $0.04 cent per share estimate. Sales of $3.23 versus $2.71 billion. So they beat the sales estimate. They missed the EPS assessment by a penny. And I mentioned that EPS figure also includes a $0.20 cent per share charge related to special items. I'm assuming that's COVID. It, the initial headline, they hit it down a little bit, but they bought it back. And maybe that charge, when you back that out, the sales were pretty good. Maybe this wasn't that bad of a quarter. So, you know, on the initial headline, the algos, obviously, they just read three cents versus four cents. And they sell a little bit, which is starting to be proven to be wrong. It hasn't rallied much here. But, I mean, when the stocks start to just hang out and stop going down and the report isn't that great, so it's make you think they might want to go higher. So on KMX, I would not want to be short. Uh, we're trading it to high, uh, just no off the 102. Yeah, we hit that a few times. Uh, 101.80, 101.38. So a couple bucks off there. 
What's the all-time high? The all-time high, you got some ways to go to 103.18. That was uh, that was your high back in February. So, I mean, I look at that as potential. Sell range from the pre-market high up to 101.38 up to the 103 and change. I really couldn't tell you where to buy this thing. You did get some dips under 98. But uh, this uh, they sell used cars, right? CarMax, right? That's what yeah. they do? Yeah. yeah, it's not the stuff that you put on your lips, right? It's the no, no, that's used car. <laughs> yeah, is there is there a lip balm called Carmax? Yes, yes, there is. No, I don't want to. I tell you, used car sales are huge. I mean, a lot yeah, of people. I don't are see not, that. I mean, yeah, fundamental. I just fundamentally, I I can't see. It's a COVID stuff. play. Yeah, used it cars. Is. You know, people yep. aren't going out there. You know, hurting for money here to a certain extent. And you know, used cars. You hey, know, we saw on, Carvana. Look on. at the Carvana. What Wait, it's done. back up for a second. That's Carmex, Joel. Oh, is the that... lip balm's Carmex. <laughs> is it? He so there is a lip balm that's close to that. Oh, so man. give Joel a break, okay. man. Fine, Joel gets a break. <laughs> uh, anyway. something new on the show. Here. You're right. It is. It All is. Right. Carmex. There must be like bomb. a thousand of those things around here. In the house. Lisa uses those things. Okay, but to Dennis's point, Carvana. See the. I actually use Bird's Bees as uh, my preferred product. But anyways, uh... <laughs> stings the lips. <laughs> I mean, Carvana's breaking out here again. We're sitting on CVNA making new all-time highs. New all-time highs this morning. This is a full breakout. I don't see, you know, and sometimes, obviously, you know, you can have some relationship here maybe between KMX and Carvana, but Carvana's the growth one. Carvana's the one that everybody's talking about. Carvana's got the story behind it. Carvana looks like it's breaking out. What's the symbol on that one? CVNA. CVNA. Charlie Victor Nancy Alpha. Yeah, I mean, you know, story, you know, this. I mean, I guess they're just, where did I hear this? Did, did I read it? Did I hear it? Did I think it? Did I dream it? You dream stuff up all the time, Joel. Yeah. And then you bring your dreams into our reality. I Do you want to hear my dream about the Belmont or should we wait? <laughs> yeah, let's talk. No, let's no, go no, away. Do you want to do the horse? We got to wait till the horses till the end. Uh, well, he wanted to do it before before Raz came on. Okay, well, let's do the horses right now. We'll take three. three Joel, you got the clock. Three the minutes. Next minute. Oh, look at that! I'm, like I'm, I'm like I'm three on minutes. Time. Three minutes. Oh, now I'm on a timer. You, yeah. the guy that talks for eighteen seconds. minutes. One hundred and eighty on... seconds. Off. Yeah, but I talk stocks. You're talking horses. Okay. Well, they're let's both. Go. Imp- okay. All right. So you know they're running to Belmont first, right? Right. Yep. Okay, very unusual. Usually the Belmont's a mile and a half, right? They're not doing that. The Belmont is only going to be a mile in an eighth. And the Ooh, other two legs. Ball. Yep. So the other two legs of the Triple Crown are going to remain the same. So that's that's one interesting thing because people were complaining about, oh, the Belmont's too hard on horses, California Chrome's owner. So that's number one. Okay, number two, the chalk. The supposed chalk is out. You know, Bob Baffert that's had all the great horses. He had a horse charlatan hurt his ankle. He's out. All right. So by default, that's going to make Tis the Law the favorite. He's going to go off about six to five. And he, he won the Florida Derby, one of the prep races, very impressively. The re, well, Number one, I don't bet the favorite. Number two, he's been laid off for three months. So I'm thinking, you know, usually the regiment, you run the Florida Derby. Next month, you run the Kentucky Derby. So I think he's going to be a little bit rusty. I'm going to I'm gonna lay off with him. Now I'm going to give you some potential long shots. Uh, the first long shot uh, Nick Malucci mentioned is Sol Valente. And I'm not sure what odds you're going to get on this one, but the horse in six career outings has never finished out of the money. He's won four. And he's coming second and third. So he's a consistent horse uh, that was only purchased for 20 grand. And uh, he prepped down in Tampa Bay. He uh, won to Sam F. Davis by two and a quarter lengths. And then he was second in the Tampa Bay Derby. So there's one of my long shots. Uh, one more long shot. Okay. Um, is, uh, is Max Player. And Max Player, it's a New York horse. This lady, Linda Rice, trains him. She knows the New York racetracks. Um, he won the grade three winners, and he's fast. He's fast out of the gate. So I like that. My pick, and I'm not doing this just because of the name, but it's called Tap It to Win. 
All right. And the reason I like that horse is because of its speed, its breeding, its trainer, its jockey, and its post position. And his sire is Tappet. Uh, Tappet was like the top sire in North America for two, 2014, 15, and 16. Uh, he sired back to back Belmont winners in 16 and 17. His trainer won the Belmont last year with Sir Winston. And his jockey, John Velasquez, has uh, won the Belmont twice with uh, Rags to Riches and Union Rags in 07 and 12. And finally, he got the rail. Now, if you look at the winners of post positions in the Belmont by post position, the number one is the dominant dominant post position. So tap it to win. I'm hoping he's ignored. I'm hoping I get six, seven, eight to one, a couple of them with a couple of these other horses. And not only if he's going to win, I can tell you what's going to happen during the race. He's got the rail. He's going to break first. He's going to get to the lead. He's either going to hold on to that lead right there or hopefully some, someone covers him up a little bit, get a little bit of live cover, right? And then just hoping that his speed, he uh, almost broke the track record for a mile and 16th at Belmont and just hopes that speed, uh, you know, just keeps going. Uh, if he has to, if he gets shuffled back at the beginning and has to come from behind, then I could probably rip up my tickets right away. But uh, tap it to win, folks. That's my choice. That was some good analysis. I, I don't know yeah. anything about horses, but that, that seems pretty coherent. I, I know. It's all over my head. Like, it all just, you know, when you're talking all this stuff, because I don't follow the horses at all either. But it sounded pretty professional, Joel. It sounded, it sounded you good. You know yeah. me, man. I know, I know these ponies. Like, tap it I to mean, win. Yeah, so all we tap, need to know is that's where we put the money. That's why I put win. my money. And you know what, Dennis? It's one of oh, those We don't trades. give horse trading advice either or horse <laughs> Definitely betting not. advice on the show. Definitely you know not. what? It's Re the read right... the disclosure. If you put all your money on tap to win, it doesn't win. You know, we're sorry. But yeah, you know, we'll... but I feel good. Like, I feel it's like the right trade. I'm putting on the right trade. I'm doing <laughs> the right thing. My stop is what, you know, whatever the amount of money uh, that I lose. But um that's a good I, thing about horse betting. Yeah. You know, when you're looking at just buying your ticket, you know how much you're going to lose. Your, yeah, risk, exactly. your risk is very well defined. Yeah. I mean, I hate doing it online. I mean, even when they had this online stuff, I used to go out to Hazel Park and get the real tickets. And I actually print out my tickets, you know, when I do it through uh, uh, Twin Spires. But, um, you know, it, it should be fun. It's just, you know, what have you had for sports? You've had uh, golf, NASCAR. Korean baseball games and horse racing, right? It's so a lot racing. of sports. We got sports coming though. They're going to be coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. I hope. Yep. So there you go, man. That's my pick. So tap <sighs> to win. Okay. Well, let's tap it to win in some stocks here, Joel. So now that you've given us your horse pick, give us a stock pick here. Yeah, please. What are you eyeing for the stock market right now? What are you looking at? What is uh, on your screen and what do you like? And don't tell uh, me the S&P. What do I'm you long, like? I'm long, I'm long, uh, I'm long, I'm uh, long futures and I'm long the spider from last Okay, time. well, I said don't tell me the S&P. So Joel likes the market overall. Yeah, you know what, what though? specific but, stock do you but, like? But how, often, how often does, does Joel go long overnight? Not not very often. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So this is how, I, I, I'm going to tell you, let's go back to the imbalances. They're growing. So I don't know. Like I said, they can flip. A lot of the funny things can happen on expiration. But as of right now, holy mackerel this market would open a hell of a lot higher than where it is right now. So we'll see. I, I, you know, on a normal day, if it wasn't expiration, I'd be buying stocks just because of this, but I know there's gonna be a lot of institutional players that come in. These might pair off, but this is just kind of market that they might pair off a hell of a lot higher. So uh, I've already a few of the imbalances. They've only grown. So they're getting bigger and they are beastly. It's pretty much buys across the board. I'm looking for a sell imbalance. There is not very many sell imbalances out there at all. Um, this market wants to go higher. What about AMC here? So th they're the ones that have the headline here that they're going to reopen most of their theaters. Are they the catalyst for this entire market? Is this market being pushed by a theater company? I'm not going to say it's not. The reopening it's trade. <laughs> AMC reopening some theaters. This has got to be good. Everything is going to reopen. If the theaters can reopen, everything can reopen. Buy stocks. That's the analysis here that, you know, this market is giving. I don't know what this AMC. I mean, uh, the, well, they closed the one by us, Spencer. and Permanently? Yeah. The star. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yep. So I, I don't know. Man. The CEO was on Kramer last night. 
And he, he said this very, he said AMC is doing very well or going to be doing very well going forward. He was bullish his company. The CEO yeah. was bullish his own company. So <laughs> take just, that with whatever you want. I mean, it was in a downtrend before. Uh, I don't know. I just think this whole movie industry is really changing. I mean, it's getting a nice pop here. Uh, up 72 cents. You had that pop when Amazon was going to take it. It's had a couple pops here. Uh, Squeezing them a bet. Yeah. It's a squeeze place. Yeah. Uh, you're trading what? 636 here. What do you got on the dailies? Uh, you, I don't know. I mean, you, you, if you're super bullish this thing, then look for 735. That, that was the day that it got to the uh, the rumor. It closed at uh, 629 on that day. It hit seven, open 730, hit 735, closed at 629, and then sold off. So, I mean, if someone's got a bid and they want to take this up, I don't, you know, I don't see a lot of resistance up here to 735. I just, I just don't think it's going to get there. So, okay, other stocks that reported here. We had last night Smith, the old Smith and Wesson SWBI reported earnings. Give us those numbers there, Spencer. Um, it's been on a hell of a run. We know, obviously, with the protests going on, that, you know, and obviously the riots to a certain extent that people have been probably going and shopping and buying guns. So, how did SWBI do? Yeah, a little surprised that that stock's not up more this morning, but uh, the pretty Q4, good report, but maybe yeah. all priced in. Uh, maybe uh, Q4 Kroger. EPS. 57 cents uh, versus 26 cents a year ago. Sales, uh, $233 million versus $175 million a year ago. So some nice year-over-year -year growth for SWBI. I can never remember what the new ticker is, but uh, not really doing a ton this morning. They change their ticker every other week, but yes, it's SWBI now. It is down. It was up initially on the report. This pulled a little bit of a Kroger where Kroger blew it away, but everybody kind of expecting them to have pretty good numbers. And, um, you know, it's leaked a little bit since then. I mean, it's just a matter of a lot of good news priced in. The stock was 11 bucks three weeks ago, closed at 1872. So you're talking about a stock that's run up 60% in three weeks. Not surprising that, you know, it can't tack on more on a pretty good report. Uh, let's see. You're in the red here. I think I'll go. I mean, you, you got your clear resistance up top. If they, if they want to rally this, they're going to take it to 19, uh, you know, split the 45 and the 1975. That's your super extra major resistance. You got to get through that. Uh, if that doesn't hold, I'm just looking at it. Something's like telling me 18 bucks here. Uh, if this doesn't hold and you got to give it a little bit of a wiggle, I see pre-market, they knocked it below that area. But if you split the lows from the last three sessions, 1777, 1791, and 1821, call that 18. Holds 18, then boom. Let's go up and test the close. I don't like it. I mean, I, I, I just think it loses 18. You start getting under 1775, and then you're looking at a buck drop. So I think for, for SWBI, uh, really needs to hold 18 and it's at 1822 right now and not bolting out of there. So leaning a little bit to the bearish side here, if it doesn't. Joel with his horse analysis on that stock. The horse analysis? The bolting out, out of there. You Bolt. didn't even realize yeah. it. Did. Yeah, yeah, and I tell you. You got the I horses just, on the brain right now, man. I just hope tap it. I hope he just breaks clean, man, and just gets out there. And then, you know, force, uh, maybe force the favorite to use a little bit early, you know, to get some live cover. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Dennis, let's go to some uh, tickers from the chat here. Let's get some thoughts on Eli, Lily. And yeah, I've been looking at this one. I've been licking my chops. I haven't lost money shorting it yet. But man, oh, man. On which one? Eli or Merck? Yeah, Lily. Okay. Lily. I don't know, Dennis. This is a super tough pattern. This is so unusual for Lily. Well, I, I didn't think it could have that big of a move, but now it's held up. Yeah, I know. It's such a tough. Let's just go on a tangent here for two minutes till Jason comes on. But it's such a tough market to look at, you know, history, look at it quantitatively, yep. looking, you know, at how we've traded because it's a different market right now. And the market is different because retail is driving the bus. And retail's doing, you know, they just need a hot story. And that's why these stocks, you know, certain stocks start to get hot. And they just go and they go and they go and they go. 
So um, obviously you don't have, you know, the retail traders sitting there and doing fundamental analysis and analyzing. Well, I know quantitatively speaking, Lily has the last time it's had, you know, a move of, of 10% in one day. You know, it, it's, it's just a different, you know, it's different breed of, of market right now. So it's not coming in. It's holding up. So for this from a technical basis, I would say as long as it holds above 155, bulls are in control. I know. I know. So hey, Dennis, I can you tilt your my camera stopper. up a little bit? We can only can you tilt your camera? Well, I'm, I'm crouching down. Oh, well, lazy here, you, really. Yeah, sit up. I gotta sit up more. I gotta in my back. Why my posture. back's bad all the time? And then you'll so be complaining sit, know, about your like, back. Nah, nah. You haven't had a cold in a while, though. You haven't had a cold in a while. <laughs> Well, I don't go out that. anywhere. I know I, nobody's <laughs> been sick. My kids have never been this healthy in their lives. The social distancing thing, that's the one good thing. We don't all have the cold and the flus. Usually uh, from school, I'm sick all the time because the kid comes, kids cough in each other's faces at school. Then they come home, my kid coughs in my face, and boom, me and my little social distance bubble, which I'm always in because I work from home, can't handle that. My immune system's so <laughs> so crappy from never going out or ever going anywhere. So I just get sneezed on the wrong way and boom, I'm sick. <laughs> so were... that's the one benefit to this whole social distancing thing. I don't have any normal flus or colds either. Yeah. You you were you were quarantined long before the uh I've been the, quarantined the, the, for I'll years. I'll just ago. tell you on this one, I, I will just finish up the lily here. I'll go with Dennis here. Until it breaks that 155, that was the low. That's part of the gap area. Then you got to cautiously play it from the long side. Uh, the highs have come down significantly. 6743, 6436, 6297. Uh, the closes have been kind of mixed, but you know, if, if you're looking to buy it, man, I don't know. There's a step down seller here. They're being patient. They're not whacking it. I don't know what a downgrade would do to it, but really, it, it's tough. I did not think it would be holding up here this long. All right, I'm going to more stocks in the chat. Jason, yeah. would us, Jason would join us in a few minutes here, but let's go to retail. We're being asked about Macy's and Kohl's. I've been asked about Kohl's several times by different people in the past couple of weeks. I, people in my life seem, seem to really like Kohl's. I don't know why. I had it once. I had it for the for the day. It went up fifteen percent the next day, and I sold it. It's come back into almost the area where I bought it. I mean, you got a little. You know, it, it's actually in consolidation station here a little bit. It's trading up here this morning a bit, but I'd I'd lean on yesterday's low twenty two sixty three. So if I'm buying it here, I want to see follow through. I want to see this you know market continue to go higher. I mean, we might as well give the imbalances with these things too, because the imbalances are just insane and everything. It's only twenty thousand to buy on this, so that's pretty small. Um, but I'd say you, you've got to set up for the trash stocks to start running here again today, leaning on yesterday's lows. And that applies to every single stock that's, you know, these ground zero stocks for the re, or the reopening stocks, if you want to call them that. So I'd lean on yesterday's low, 2263 if I was going long. Uh, tough one here. Uh, I'll just say you're opening into some resistance. Yesterday's high, 2404. So if you're buying this off the open, you want to just hold 24. You don't want to see this thing going 23.85, 23.75 on you. And then you got room. I mean, if they really want to do a quick run up, your two-day high is 24.64. Uh, but you need you need to hold that. You need to hold that that gap up here at 24 bucks. Coming back on the downside, you know, Dennis, you like leaning on that low. The setup there, and if you do get a pullback. Maybe try yesterday's close at 23.36 and then lean on that low. Uh, looking at Macy's, man, double digits. That lasted like a nanosecond. 10.36 that day, open, hit 10.46. You're back under seven bucks or you were yesterday. Buyer at seven here. Uh, yeah. See if, yeah, there's a buyer. He was at six, 674. Now they're, you know, if I could get this in the lower sevens, maybe uh, risk down to 650. Six, 660, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 660. Yeah, but man, double digits for that. They slammed it. So overall, you know, oh, their real estate's worth a lot of value. This is but... a very important day for the overall market. Very important because we've got the expiration. We're going to have some wicked opens. What do they do with them? Do they follow through or do they fade? Like that's the biggest thing. The imbalance is just to give you an update here. They just they just got a lot smaller. They're still pretty big, but they're a lot smaller than they were. So they're starting to look like before they were looking mammoth, like these stocks are going to open up at the moon. Now they're looking still strong, but there's definitely some sellers that have come in. And oh, said, there's got to be, yeah. 
there, there, it is like that's how it works you know what the imbalance is so for newer listeners what we're talking about is it's the new york so i'm looking at the new york stock exchange nasdaq imbalances don't come out till 9 28 so we can never talk about them on the show for new york stock exchange the imbalances come out at eight o'clock and they continue to update until the 9 30 open and what an imbalance is it's showing you the buy and sell orders geared and marked for the open so when i see a million shares to buy in coca-cola that means relative to the closing price, which is $46.99, there is 1 million shares more to buy than sell right now. The projected opening on Coca-Cola right now, which obviously isn't going to open there, but this is where with they took everything in the book and paired it off, would be 51 and a half. That's never going to happen. Coke's never going to open that high because it's just the book hasn't filled up yet. But as the book fills up, the projected opening comes down. When you see the book projected opening, you know, 10 seconds before the open, it gives you a pretty good gauge of where the stock's going to open. 50 minutes before I never talk about them because they're useless information because the books are so empty. So, but the imbalance is still information. And at 1.1 million to buy, it's telling you the Coke right now is looking very strong to open much higher than where it closed. That's what the imbalances are. And we used to and, talk about them because they used to come out at 8.30. Yeah, and, and then they changed they, it to now 8. Now just moved it up. Yeah, 8 o'clock now. And right. NASDAQ is still 9.28. And NASDAQ has a closed book so they, they were run a little bit differently. Yes, there is some exceptions some um, in there, but for the most part at 928, when they give the projected opening, it's a lot more relevant than New York because New York will allow you to keep sending orders geared for the open right until the stock opens, even if it opens after 930, where NASDAQ closes. So at 928, it's closed auction now. So you can't send any more orders geared for the open after 928. So when 928, their imbalances come out. And all of a sudden, that's why you see these wicked moves at 928, because you have the NASDAQ imbalances come out and the NASDAQ um, projected opening prices. So, you know, for example, Apple might be trading today at 355. If a 928 projected opening shows 353, traders' algorithms will sell in the pre-market. And because they figure the stock's going to open up closer to 353. So right now they're in the dark. Everybody's in the dark. We don't know exactly where Apple. We know it's probably going to open higher because the S&Ps are opening higher. But, you know, funny things happen on these, you know, days where, you know, stocks can open away from what we call fair value, where they're, which should be valued relative to where the S&P is. And that can give, you know, traders an opportunity as well. Those are the inefficiencies that I try to exploit. Uh, real quick, uh, someone was just asking a stock we don't follow, Planet 13 Holdings. It's uh, OTC, PL. This is a cannabis stock. This is a cannabis stock. I'm not, we're not great with, uh, with lower What's price the symbol? stocks. It, it, Paul, oh, uh, PL, PLNHF. It's consolidating. It had a, you know, you, last couple moves, it had a move up, consolidated, move up. And then here's another consolidation. So trend is up since it made that low. It needs to clear a buck 85. Seems like someone's just selling buck 85, buck 86, buck 85. So you clear that. Maybe you get over $2, uh, a trading range consolidation, hoping the consolidation re revol uh, you know, resides itself to the upside on that one. All right, Jason joining us here in about a minute. Give so, us another okay. ticker. Yeah, let's do one more. Uh, and just FYI, for the people in the chat throwing like penny stocks our way, just for disclosure, penny stocks are just not in our, our wheelhouse. So I has yeah. This isn't a penny stock show. This is a. But yeah. I mean, you know, if you're into penny stocks, we talk them every once in a while. And yes, yeah. you can make a lot of money, but you can lose a lot of money. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Here, Jason's here, so I'll bring him on right now. Uh, Jason Raznick is the, and we'll try to get to more stocks uh, afterwards if we have time. But Jason Raznick is the founder and CEO. Uh, of Benzinga. He's been joining us every Friday for the past uh, month or two months and uh, given us some pretty damn good ideas. Jason, good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Like my shirt? Yeah, Benzinga Detroit. How do I get one of those? I want one of those Benzinga yeah. Detroit shirts. Send like that Benzinga over. Benzinga Detroit. So we're going to have a swag store launching on Benzinga in the next two to three weeks of all types of stuff, not just Benzinga gear. But different sayings, you know, we're going to have Joel and the horses and <laughs> put a little ass next to the horse. Like, I got it wrong. Like, his tapping to win is going to be, like, last place. And we're just going to use those. <laughs> it's like, it, it's, it's all happening. You he know? could. He could come in last. He, he very he very well could. Who do you like, uh, Jason? I hope not. I just put $1,000 on tapping to win. Just because yeah. Joel said it. <laughs> 100%. Uh, 100%. I mean, you, you, you know, you got to pay attention to your, like, your listeners, like, we got Mitch Hotch who told us WKHS. Uh, that, that was uh, Mitch you know, that uh, gave us that, eh? 
Yo, oh my God. Did he Man, get Mitch, thank you so much. This is, uh, like I said, I'm, and it's come back in a little bit this morning, but I think I'm still up about 60% from where Mitch mentioned this two Are weeks you, ago. You're, you're in it, Dennis? Yeah, I'm in it. Nice, nice. Yeah, he mentioned it. It's a Cleveland thing. They're, they bought the facility of like old GM plant, and they're doing the, the long-range truck, trucking. So it's up. And Electric. It's, Electrics. It, it, it's riding. It's moving. And Mitch was on it for a while. He actually asked about it like two, two shows in a row, and we didn't even get to it. So um, I will. Yeah, and then I looked at I, I sometimes reread the chat after just because good ideas come from the chat. And I was looking at this. I was like, oh, electric truck play. I'm like, I like the chart. I'm like, I'll go for this. And and it's taken off ever since. So Mitch with a great call. Yep. And then, you guys, in the chat room, will you just um, humor me? Press one if you would like a chat room to go on. Just during the, when the show is off and you guys want to chat amongst yourself, would you like a chat room to go? We may do um, um, a Discord just to see if you'd like to see a chat. One, if you would like it, just to, you know, and two, if you wouldn't. So basically, if Dennis has an idea in the middle of the day, he can pop in and say something or you guys can chat. But well, that- we already have that to an extent. We have it in pro. We don't. We, we, we have a, the chat in pro. Well, look at that. And then, look and then at we have that. Wow. And then we have the chat in on premarket.pensing.com. That's, that's always going. So, no, you're right. That's true. So, we, we, so the YouTube chat, you can bring it over to premarket.benzinga or you can get into the pro, get your free yeah. trial. The pro one is hopping. That chat's hopping there too. And people all right, are hopping. But look, but look at that. Look at that. I uh, got some twos. Okay, we got some twos. So one guy gave it. So yeah, we already have that. We don't have it. We don't have what I'm talking about. So okay. I was going unva- to unveil it today, but I just didn't. Next week I may. We have, yes, we can go to premarket.benzinga.com. True. But the discord because people already have them it'd be easier just to pop in every so often that's that's why i'm saying it versus having another window open but i get a spencer we kind of do but i i don't know hey i got some people chairman kim likes it anyway all right i did that was one idea also if you guys are on tiktok please check out the benzinga tiktok it is on fire a lot of clips from the show joel and dennis talking it up it is on fire we have we're the i think the number one most followed tiktok of a financial media company. Um, yes, you're probably gonna make jokes, TikToks are for 10 year olds, but we are the most number one. Bloomberg went on TikTok like, like eight months ago, to- total failure, was off two weeks later, or was off six months later, they put like $5 million on it. We spent none of that money. And we have, <laughs> we have 20,000 followers. And why do we have it? Because of the great community that this uh, show is. I mean, that's, and just check it out, it's fun. The reason I like TikTok is I'm ADD guys. If you haven't told, I got like ADHD, whatever, whatever H's and D's you want to add to that. And, <laughs> and, and TikTok works for me because it's, it's 15 seconds, 30 seconds, you know? So I don't know. I, I love TikTok. Now we can talk stocks though. There, and the other, yeah. So want to go to stocks now, Dennis? Yeah. What, what stocks? So you like TikTok, but what stocks do you so, like? That's what we want. They yeah, all come yeah. for you. Everybody comes every Friday here, the Jason Rasnick picks. No, I know. I, I, I'm, I like, I, I, I maxed, or I, you know, I peaked like three weeks ago. You peaked, you know? early. <laughs> I peaked early. It's been all downhill. Spencer's like, okay, we gotta, we gotta find. It. Spencer, Spencer, the producer of the show, is like, we gotta find a new replacement for Jason Rasnick. I did it. I <laughs> replaced myself too, because this week I have to be honest. I didn't really trade stocks much. I was doing mostly Benzinga stuff, and I told you guys last week or two weeks ago that I, I don't know. I told you I was on margin. I got out of margin. I'm not on margin. And I like sold 10% of not like, so I sold 10% in addition of not being on margin because the trend, it didn't seem like it was, it was going to, you know, go our way as much as like it was. And I think there's an up and down days. I know our futures are up today, 300 points. So I just been a little more conservative and just buying the stocks that I think do well throughout any of this stuff. I mean, GAN is by far my, no, it's not my biggest, Tesla's my biggest position. GAN is my second biggest position by far. It, it got crushed from when we were on the yep. show from like 22 to 17. I got like two text messages like, thanks for this loser, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. I can show it to you from, from the squirrel, Lexi. <laughs> yeah, your taxi shows. Yeah, actually, well, you give, Jason, I'll give you an idea. If you if you give your cell phone number out on the show, you may get you may get some text get some messages hate text. from people. Yeah, you might oh, get yeah my cell phone number. Um, however, I got two text messages from people that, that day of, when I gave my number out of great I, advice, great things. I got to go back to those texts because I don't think I followed through on those. Thank you. 
for reminding me. Yeah, my text number is 248-0000. Text any ideas, not trading ideas, but any ideas for the show or Benzinga or Benzinga Pro. The trading ideas, I can't comment on well, one-on-one. I have to be in public since we're a regular, you know, media. Regulatory. All right. Concerns. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So, um, Eli, E-L-Y. So, I, I'm still playing Callaway. Are you guys, I know these aren't as exciting as Express Spa, but I just think this golf trend is not going to stop right now. I think it's the biggest thing in, like, I think, like, Callaway is a perfect player in it. You guys, two weeks ago on the show, you kept debating what is the bike stock what is the bike stock you're like a schwinn a schwinn public no there really aren't any peer play bike stocks callaway's a peer play trend on this on the summer activities of not having much to do so i just think you're gonna have a chance to see this thing hit 20 before the summer's over um and our earnings date for callaway looks to be um august 6. so i I'm excited on this one. I bought it when it went back down to 14.95. Um, Penn National is another one. That... Jason's a scratch golfer, and he's not scratch. Okay. Wow, well, Jason's a very good golfer. Very good. He, That's good. he will not give me a stroke a hole. He will not. He will not. Because I hardly play. It was a half a stroke up par threes, one on par fours, and two on par fives. Okay. And I'll still be you. I would beat you because I would just harass the shit out of you. Oh, <laughs> he gets in your head. Jason uh, will get in your head. Have, <laughs> it's like, come on, Joel. You can make this six footer. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have Dennis and Spencer caddy for us. How about that? All right. <laughs> okay, so I got I got weak on um, Polaris. So I bought Polaris at 77. It's at 94. PII. I own. I sold like 70% of the position because I when the market was falling it's at 94. I still own it. I still think it's fine. I still think those uh polaris's pii will still be fine um, i got a question for you do you well, ever sell the whole position because you're already saying i'm selling 33 percent of the position i'm selling 60 yeah, percent. Yeah. do you ever sell the whole position are you like a little bit of warren buffett in you that you always hold a piece forever great question um i don't sell the whole position that often i sold new york times last week at 41 i bought we bought it at 27 i bought it, i bought it from 32 down to 27 I sold all of it, Dennis. I had to get off margin. I was on margin. <laughs> and so I would not have sold it, but I'm like, I'm getting off margin. I think we're in for a big pullback and I wanted to have cash like, you know, to spend. But I look at some stocks that are just rising. I mean, we talked about V. I talked about VSTO two weeks ago, guys. And it was at like, you know, sometimes like you can say I'm, you know, front running. I'm talking my, my book. I'm talking stocks that go down from when I buy them. You know? <laughs> you know? was down whatever and now i see it's up 17 percent. another one was swith and smith and wentz west wesson i bought the september 18th two, uh, 2020 calls that is up 90 percent since we bought it 90 percent the smith and wesson calls that we talked about keep an eye on 18 on that one jason if it doesn't hold 18 morning. today are you planning on holding through september i'm planning on holding at least through august for earnings I think that with what you're seeing out there in this world, I don't think this stock can fall, but I hear you. So you're holding for the next earnings report because we, well, yeah, we got the initial have... earnings report today, and obviously it was pretty good numbers, but a lot baked in. The numbers were good. The numbers were fine. Oh. It was a lot baked in. But you think the second quarter, because that would have been the first quarter earnings, so obviously not baking in did all they... the riot stuff. The next quarter is going to be maybe the money. So that's did a they... long time to hold did for they... me. <laughs> Hey, Jason, Jason, just one more. What, what do you have that you have the SEP 20s, you said? Yeah, I got, uh, um, yeah, 20 calls in September. Yep. Okay. I mean, there's also the possibility. I bought them at 160, about 10 calls. Okay. This is, this is just a suggestion. Okay. Sure. If you want to lock in some profit. Okay. If, and if the stock goes nowhere, you can maybe sell the 21s. You could sell the and put and, and roll it into a call spread. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. I would love for the show that we could do that live today at three forty-five or another day. I don't like call spreads. I don't know how to do that. I'm a simple like bread and butter guy. Like I buy calls, I buy puts. Like I don't know how to do that. Now that Joel, you're what you're saying, I'm for. I just need to learn how to do that. Okay, it's just a to, we, so we, maybe we, on the afternoon jo show, Joel can set up, up a trade for you there. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Are you going to be around or are you going to be golfing? <laughs> You're not going to be golfing. 
unless I'm golfing with you. Okay. So, <laughs> um, what one um, crazy one? It's a Penn National. It's baked into the stock. They're gonna they're gonna announce a sporting app, a, a betting app. The question that I have is when Penn National releases the, the betting app, you know, with Barstool Sports, the website thing. Is it going to overtake DraftKings? Is it going to become the talk of the town? Is Penn National going to go from a $32 stock around there? I mean, it was at $4. You could have bought it in the downtrend. Um, but is it going to be a $50 stock? That's the question I have. So I'm, I'm holding my October 41 calls on Penn National. I sold half of them. I'm holding the rest. I think it's a forty to fifty dollar stock when they have that. I I, I know it's already. Been, some people might say, Jason, you're an idiot because it's already baked in. They, they talk about it on the show a lot, but I don't know. I, I I'm, I'm playing Penn National. A lot of headlines like that. Surprisingly, you think they're going to be baked in, and then they're not baked in. I mean, we've seen cases, you know, and, and LAKE was one that I was just shocked. You know, like that. It went up fifty percent after its earnings report. They make face masks. They make everything that we've needed like crazy over the last, you know. So you'd think that it was all baked in when the stock was trading fifteen dollars. Oh, we we know they're going to be because everybody's been just looking for obviously equipment to uh, for safety equipment, um, masks and and whatnot. And the stock goes up sixty percent as they beat. So I was like, you know, here. It, so sometimes it's funny. You think it's all baked in, and then it's not baked in. So yeah. I always like a catalyst when you've got something coming up. A lot of times you'll see a run up before an announcement as well. So, That's do we know like when they're officially gonna? Do we have any projected date that they're gonna officially announce this gaming app? No, um, the date he he. Um, I talked to the guys from Barstool. I have a friend who used to be at the Street.com. He's the head of business development at Barstool. I talked to him yesterday. Um, we, you may hear some Benzinga Barstool stuff in the future. And so um, they didn't give me a date, but it's in the next ninety days is what I would say is the closest. But you just gave me an idea, um, Dennis. You know, you said you like Catalyst. Mm -hmm. Forget even the stock names. We should literally do a segment on the show once a week or twice a week. Just Catalyst. Like, list the stocks that have upcoming Catalyst. Yep. Like, don't even go, like, I'm going long or short. Just list the things that have upcoming Catalyst because that's a such a trading opportunity, right? Yep. Either way, like, long or short. Like, on Joel's thing earlier on the horses – I don't know who's broadcasting it. I don't know if it's a big enough catalyst, but like there must be, you know, like, I don't know, Chewy. <laughs> I don't know, like horses, dogs, whatever. But um, it doesn't so, scratch. No sense. But like this list the catalyst place because I agree with you, Dennis. I love catalyst. That's why I bought DO. That's why I bought, well, Delta's not a good one, but that's lithium. I mean, I am, I'm still long lithium, guys. I know someone just asked that. I'm, I'm long with you. Yep. Yep. We're all Let me know there. when you sell. <laughs> well, I, I, Dennis, I did sell thirty percent of the position at like eight oh eight or eight eight or eight. Can I? I, I want to hop in here. I just want to talk Penn Gaming here real quickly because I, I have a very, I have a, a really good feel on this stock right now. Um, and you all know what I'm going to say. It hit that forty fourteen right on uh, June fifth, uh -huh. and then you had some profit taking come in, and it took it down to twenty seven fifty two. Yeah. Halfway back is thirty four dollars. Uh, you hit that one day. You've had You're a couple of right now. Yeah. Uh, that, I tell you, that's the close. You got to keep closing above 34 here and then get up and challenge that 40 area. If not, you know, you obviously you don't want to see it take out that 27.52. But I say the next couple, even, even if it just held out here and consolidated for two or three days, that would yeah. be good. But a lot of people got some of their losses back. Other people are taking some profits. So we'll be wa I'll be watching 34, Jason. We'll be talking about 34. Big level. See if it held up in Penn. We'll be talking about that one next week. And uh, Joel, can you do one more real quick? Um, Apple? Oh, boy, boy, boy. I'm sorry. I mean, Apple. Uh it's new all time highs. Yeah, yeah. You know Against what? The only, or, or, I, right really around. Did, yeah, it's it's kicking through the all time high right now. I will just say there was a, a the day that it popped out at fifty five forty two days ago. Someone was someone was out there at three fifty six, and they were out there big. That's where it traded up to in the pre market today expiration. They could be gone, but I do remember a big seller at three fifty six. Don't even know if he's going to be there today, but. Uh, you know, it's up three bucks. If it just opens up and starts ramming, what's the average daily range in that thing? Uh, eh, it's only like, ah, they had a quiet day. 
don't know. Figure out your nine day average trading range. It looks like you hope make an early morning low and then use that as a target. But I, uh, I never I, short stocks making new all time yeah, highs. Yeah. That's that's just one of my rules. I am long Apple. I've been long Apple for years though. So obviously I'm Dennis, did you that. sell did you sell any Apple like in the past like three months when it was like getting killed or anything? Or you no. just Oh, I held my Apple all the way through it. I listened to Jim Cramer on that one. He's like, hold Apple. <laughs> so I trade Apple. I'm sure I I traded in and out, but my long term and my like retirement account, I've always got some Apple. Do you know what uh, Dennis, did you know I used to work for Jim Cramer? Did you? Yeah. That's how I got into all this crap. All this stuff. Where was um, that? At, at the street or where? The street. They actually the street. wanted me. They wanted me to run the whole real money thing. Um, I got in a fight with Jim Cramer and Doug Cass. I think I said this part on um, Thomas conversation when Amazon released AWS, and I'm like, "That's a reason to go long." And they ripped the the tail off me like that. They're 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 not focused. They're gonna fail. It was at thirty. It was like at three thirty bucks the stock or sixty bucks. And I'm like, okay, they're probably a lot smarter than me. I was twenty like four or twenty six. <laughs> But I have the screenshots. It was like it was a. You can save the screenshot. He's got on his phone. He can show the fight with Jim Cramer. Probably. <laughs> on my computer, on one of my computers, I have not thrown away this computer because I need to recover it because it was so great. It literally like they're like, he, Cramer like started his article. We truly have some buffoons on calm this conversation, referring to me saying you should go long Amazon when they had AWS at forty bucks. Okay. Well, I, is- after last week, I believe you have the receipts. Oh yeah, that's the thing. I, I sold. He's got it. Hey, did so that Jim guy Cramer, pay look you? out. Did that guy pay you for the all right, Tesla? So, all right, all right. So we have an issue with that. Let's talk about the can't the the Tesla thing. And then next week, guys, uh, um, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna give be more um transparent. Like tell more stories. Like you know the 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 phone number thing, the bet. And next week, I have a story for you guys. I think you're all gonna really like, but maybe it'll be a little too transparent um forthcoming. But I think it's good. That guy wrote me. I don't want to read it all, but. Instead of paying me the twenty eight k that he's supposed to pay me, <laughs> twenty nine three thousand, twenty nine thousand three hundred dollars. He said it should be seventeen thousand, seventeen thousand four hundred, and it's not up for negotiation. His reasoning is because of taxes. If he was taking a tax loss on this kind of loss, which you can't on gambling debts, it would be the, his tax bracket plus Michigan is four point two five percent, and. <laughs> So that goes down to 17,000, which I know is not bad. But remember, I thought I was long 50 more shares of Tesla. So it messes me up a little bit because I would have just been long the stock. Are you allowing this? What? Are you going to allow this? Are you going to let him get get by on this? I mean, I could read you the emails and I just, you know, I stopped writing back and I'm like, well, get on the phone. He yesterday wrote to me, do you have a Chase account, you know, or or Venmo? But I want to have that one conversation because, I mean, the question is, do I want to end the friendship? Or, you know, but I did think I had 50 more shares of Tesla. And the thing is, if you think about it, he saved a ton of money because he would have been on margin. He would have had margin calls. The reason I made the bet is so we didn't have to, you know, lock up money or have all these margin calls. So am I going to allow it? It's, it's, um, no, it's you, you know what? You might as well ask the chat a one to allow it to. Yeah, not I think so. <laughs> ask the chat. Does he let the guy go on this tax, you know, that he would have to pay the tax on this and this is tax free winnings that he's getting? Or does he make him pay the whole amount? One, to let them let the seventeen thousand go two for the whole amount. Let's see it. <laughs> That's a great one, Dennis. It's not, <laughs> not a good situation to be Spencer's in. Spencer's idea. Uh, I've been struggling through it because if you think about it, wait, Putra's here. James yeah, Putra. I just saw that. Holy hey, Jimmy, let's right, get so him on the show. There's one smart guy right there from Trade Station. James Putra, crypto king, and the smart, smart, and you know what? Good people. You know that's the thing, guys. Like. Life they want is- you to make them pay the whole thing. Yeah, they're all saying yeah. make them pay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> make them pay. Well, it, it did. It did mess me up because I thought <laughs> I was long fifty more shares. I really did, guys. And that would that's a big that's a big stake. So it messed me up in that thing. Like whenever I didn't have the stock, I'm like, wait, I have those fifty more shares. And so it's 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 not. And and the guy has the money. I mean, the guy. Where does he the- live? Where's he? Do you know where he lives? Don't Where? tell us where he lives. Don't tell where he no, lives. Tell, people- does I'll he tell- live in Michigan? I'll tell. This. Let I'll me just say, where he let lives. Me just say one more thing. This is going to get the room all fired up right now. And this is a true story. He invested a decent amount of money, a hundred thousand dollars in Jewel, and got a check for three million dollars when he sold it. Okay, so he has the freaking money to do it. You know, to pay me. So it is kind of BS, and I'm fired up now. You guys are fired. You guys are <laughs> they fired. They said make up. a pay. This, bullsh- he need- this is BS. He should pay the whole amount, call the day, <laughs> realize he made a mistake, and that's it. But you I know what? what? When was it due? June 12th? 
Because you should start charging to, interest. No, no, no. Interest. Interest. To, interest. It's interest. payable to June 30th. It's payable to June 30th, but it's with June 12th is the day to end it. It's payable to June 30th. But you're, yeah, to take a 50% haircut because some tax bull only yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't buy it. I don't know. It's because it's, 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 if you, what, what, let me ask you a question, Joel. If you, you know, bet with your bookie the, on the horse and you lost 400 bucks, what are you going to say? I'm not paying you for <laughs> it. It's too fancy. bucks. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But you guys, listen, this community um, has been, I just want to say how thankful this community, how awesome it is. There's two guys for me that are helping us now, Scott, Mitch, and, you know, maybe eventually working here full time. If you guys have ideas and are want you want to disrupt finance and change the way information is delivered, shoot me an email, jason at benzinga.com. I, I told Spencer Israel earlier this week that this show we could have 200,000 listeners a day if we want, and we want to go that route. We're figuring it out because we, we like the community. And that's why I thought the Discord things. We like this community. And I thought the Discord thing was, yes, Spencer's right. We have the pre-market thing. I just think Discord may be a little easier, but I could be wrong. Again, I make a lot of mistakes, but the biggest thing, and Jeff Bezos says it all the time, the biggest thing that he does in his company is they experiment, experiment, experiment. They have a ton of failures, but they experiment, experiment, experiment. So and that's what I just want us to do is experiment. And we never know what we get from it. You never man. know what you get out of a box of chocolates, Dennis. Man, Jason, Jason, you have the chat fired up on, on your behalf about this guy. So. I'm telling you, man. Does he I, listen gotta, to the show? I, I think this I, I got I got to read. He doesn't. I got to read it. Spencer asked me if this was one guy. It's not. The guy is a local, <laughs> the guy is a local dude. Okay. He lives over around here and he works in Detroit. And I think we may need – what if I sponsor a field trip to Detroit – when the Corona in July or the middle end of July, 10 guys from the show, you know, that are different States. They all come in Dennis and Joel. We do like a Saturday round Robin and we all go show up at his place of work on like Friday, <laughs> Lord. Like 10 guys from the show. We need, we need some of the bigger guys. We need some of the bigger guys <laughs> and we all show up at his place. Um, I really should text him right now that he should, oh, I should have texted me before. We He's say we took a in. vote on the show and there was like a thousand responses that said, you got to pay the whole amount. You got <laughs> oh my God. I, it wasn't uni- unanimous, but it was a majority for, I oh. think majority real. Yeah. So just, per, just, just looking, not adding them all up. I saw a lot of twos go by, man. Wait, just Don't hang up yet. Don't end the show yet. I okay. want to. I want to send a text to this guy right now. Hold the on. Hands are all thinking. <laughs> Let's do it at live. He's like, I got a screenshot here. Everybody says you got to pay the text full amount. Jason, don't, don't, don't show your phone. <laughs> I'm not, just hold on, hold on. You get. I've got people. Not, like, don't don't talk. You just, just screwed right. me up. Hold on, Joel. Okay. Just, <laughs> He's texting him right now live. No, I was. I just texted Spencer Israel by accident. Okay, <laughs> but then I stopped. All right, Steve, comma, can you come oh on my God. the live <laughs> show right now? Question mark. We are discussing the bet. Period. <laughs> right now this might be we're not, we're not bringing him on the show right now okay. <laughs> why not why he, i i don't it's know jason's show it's his company but, if he but people be able to figure out who he is i don't know i, I don't want people doing figuring out who this guy is and like they won't know your last name period okay oh, i know <laughs> they know my last name they got a go. video though <laughs> we're, 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 no, it's, it, it's gonna be that you know the teach and chong you know it's steve Remember that when he was knocking on the door? Steve. Who is he's it? Look at it's people Steve. in the chat are talking about you, buddy. Look at Steve is his name. Oh, he's like, yeah, he's got <laughs> oh, they're like, they're like, check Jason's Twitter friends to figure out who it is. Um, <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> they, I'm, I'm worried. You stacked the chat with all Jason's friends just to Steve, make sure. This is all you. These are the show. He didn't text me back. All right. Um, but yeah, uh, it doesn't look like he's coming on, but it was exciting. He has a, he has a job and he, I don't, you know, <laughs> he doesn't need a job after that jewel trade. You could think he got out of it, but the jewel uh, trade, he got out. Yeah. It's like he works in a industry where they do like bets on that. It wasn't just him and the hundred. It was like a few others. So it wasn't like, you know, um, okay. Hey, and one last thing, guys, press one. If you want to do a golf outing or two, if no, we're talking about in my head right now, it's an idea of a golf outing in your in head. August. For the pre-market prep show um, on a Saturday or Sunday, so one if you want to do it, and two if you don't. All right. And, Den- and Dennis and Joel are going to dress in tutus and be the uh, golf caddies. Yeah, we'll do it. All right. <laughs> All right. I mean, Spencer will be in the golf we'll caddies. Wait to see the results of that. Uh, Jason Rasnick is the founder and CEO. He's got the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Spencer <laughs> Israel. It, it's always nice to have a. Sorry. Hey, do you guys know Jimmy Kimmel is, is taking three months off? Should I take three months off? 
No, yeah, please. how do you take three months off? Take Should I take three months off? I don't take three Dennis, hours you off. take three minutes off, man. <laughs> yeah, you take three months off. So he wants, Spencer wants to kick me off. I get it. So two things. I'm on Twitter at Jason Raznick, R-A-Z-N-I-C-K. We love when you send us ideas. Love it. Pre-market at Benzinga.com. If there's any guests you want Spencer to get, he has yeah. access to everyone. The guy that I was going back and forth with this week, like uh, about 15 emails, and I'll show you the chain, is Mark Cuban. So I may surprise bring him on um, in the next two weeks. We actually had a great conversation. We used to fight a little bit, and we had a great conversation. So, like, Kevin O'Leary, by the way, is coming on. Kevin O'Leary is coming to the training boot camp in, like, two weeks. I saw that. Um, and so Mark Cuban, we may bring him, too. But, you guys, thanks for having me on the show. I wish I could bring you more Express Boz. It's not freaking easy. Next uh, week, we expect, expect on their Express I know bar. Dennis and Joel and Spencer make it look easy. Um, but – it's not. Oh wait, wait, wait! Hold on, guys. Text coming through. Okay. Text coming through. Okay. Okay. Don't show us. <laughs> he shows the phone. Come on, guys. Here we go. I see it. There it is. <laughs> hey, he texted you. What, what did it say? But what, it's right now. It's live, dude. What does it say? <laughs> it's <do>. ending now. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, Spencer's oh, running. Okay. Spencer's driving the bus here. <laughs> we can't. We can't read his text through the, through the screen. So you have. To oh, you couldn't. Me. Just no. It's too small. I can see it. WTF, when was this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's okay. a good one. We can clearly see it. That's funny. Okay, yeah. we see it now. We see it now. That's funny. So no question mark? So no yeah, question really. mark. Is that a no? Does that mean you're not interested? <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> oh, this is the most interesting tangent we've ever been on on Maybe the show. On option expiration, when the imbalance, buy imbalances are through the roof. We're looking at Jason's uh Jason's What's the cell question? Phone. <laughs> oh, what's the question? Um, All right. Maybe we try uh, to get him on ne next week, Jason. Okay. Oh, no, we got, got him now. We got gonna, him now. I want to put him on now, but Spencer Israel, like, he has, like, a I mean, okay. Yeah. Okay, ask him. If he wants to come on now. Ask him. Uh, do you want to? It's option expiration. Now. I've got to go. Because <laughs> no, no, I'm going to lose a lot we'll of money if I don't go week. soon. Okay. That, thank Forget you. It. That, that's I'll what I was going to Next week. Okay. Um, yeah. No, Dennis, it's not as fun if you're not on it. Like, I, I'm not for it. I like, want to give the guy some heat. Okay. Jason <laughs> is our hey, founder CEO. And and Israel, can you get a voice incisor so they don't know his voice? Can we do a voice like thing? Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Bye, guys. We love you. Send us an email. Don't forget, Benzinga loves you. We love you. Tell the world about joining Benzinga and join the crusade to change finance and the way information is delivered. Let's all make some money together. Peace out. Dennis, Joel, and Spencer. And the. All right. I kicked him off. Let me know. And he cut the boss. Let me know what's. Oh, he's gone. I want to. like I just before I even got my tea time yet. I want to get him. I want to get him. Quick imbalances. They're all buy. They're all big buy still. Market's holding up. Again, if these buy imbalances hold, the market is going to move up in the next 17 minutes. Anything can happen on option expiration, but as of right now, this market is looking very strong to open a lot even higher than it is trading right now. Yeah, right. and uh, real quickly go. before Spencer wraps it up, uh, right. I'm going to – we missed a lot of symbols here uh, with Jason, so I'm going to hop on hot, hot mic here for 8, 10 minutes. Hotmic.io, Joel. The code is Joel317. You guys throw some tickers at me. I'll be hopping over there for, for a few minutes right. before the open. Don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, and share to our YouTube channel and share this video. We appreciate that. Catch the replay of the show on our podcast or on YouTube. Please remember that all the information, all the stock trading levels, horse picks, whatever, is informational purposes <laughs> only, not for investing or trading advice. Everyone have a great rest of your Friday. Joel and I will be back in the afternoon. In the meantime, have a good day, and wherever you are, Stay safe and good luck.